How's it going people? I hope you're okay in lockdown, keeping your bars and your uh, your sheds topped up with booze. Seeing you through. And um, what I see, the reason I've done this video, I've seen a lot of people ask on these different forums, Pub Sheds UK, Home Bars UK, Pub Sheds and Man Caves, etc, etc, you know the ones. How do I get internet to my shed? Everybody's rolling their eyes or not asking again, you know, let's not be harsh on these people. Um, they're not experts in the in this field. Um, we're probably not experts in the job that they do. So we, we can't roll our eyes and have a go at them for asking the question. They may be new to the site. They've joined to the site. They're getting stressed in getting internet uh, to the uh, to the shed. So what I've done, I've done a video to try and help uh, make it easy for you. Then I can share the link to everybody. So uh, your internet... Did, what I did, I built my pub shed about five years ago, 2000, well, just over, 2015. The main thing is I wanted internet in there. I didn't really want it for Wi-Fi so people can sit with their heads in the phone. Um, it's a social place. I want people to chat, have a drink and the rest, yeah? So the, the internet I wanted in there for YouTube, for music, for Spotify, um, for, for the TV, um, you know, music that kind of entertainment so there's a couple of options um, Wi-Fi I totally won't bother with that because your internet generally comes into your house at the front of the house or wherever your uh, wherever the, the, the nearest part of your house is to the um, the cable outside coming in whether it be a cable in the ground fibre or a cable from a telephone pole which is all technology now but everybody's you know they're moving to fibre in the ground so that'll come in generally in the front of your house where your router is and then to try and rely on your router passing a signal to the back end of your house, generally where your, your outbuilding is, your shed, um, you're not going to get anything from that. You'd be lucky if you do get a signal. Mine is at the front of the house there. And what I've done, I've, I've laid a cable, but I'll go into that in a bit. So what I've done, I've done a list of, I'm on a website here, um, a BT Shop. So just a shopping list of things you're going to need. Uh, to cover both options, you won't need everything, so it depends what your setup is and how it's going to work for you. Okay, okay, so this is the first thing you're going to need. It doesn't have to be this make, but this is the kind of thing. Um, it's it's a BT broadband extender kit, basically, it's a power line. This, um, it's just two plugs that plug in the wall. One, they've both got network ports on them, so one of them you will plug in a plug socket near your router. The network cable would come out of that. You get the network cable with it. Network cable would come out of that and go into a spur port on the back of your router. And what that does, it puts an internet signal, data signal, in the electricity system in your house, putting it in basic terms. So what you would do then is the other plug, the receiver, you would put that in your shed. And then, because obviously you've got electricity in your shed, so it uses the electricity infrastructure or the electricity cables in your house to pass the data signal through so why run a cable all the way down your stairs or landing making it a mess getting on the wife's nerves you know something you could trip up it looks ugly the, the you know the your electricity system's already there why not just benefit and use the uh, use that copper wiring as a uh, you know a, a, as a data channel for your internet it just makes sense. It's already there. This there are plenty of makes: TP Link, BT, Devolo. Loads of people make them. I've just picked this one out because it's it's thirty quid. You get two plugs, and what you can actually do, you can buy multiple packs of these or any other make. Make sure the the the, the makes are the same. So again, like I say, you put one near your router, one as a receiver. If you've got, um, you know, kids on the consoles in the bedroom, mourning that the Wi-Fi signal's rubbish, buy another pair of them, put another receiver in the room, network cable straight out of that plug into the Xbox. And if you want to share the signal, you can buy a, a cheap network switch. So something like this. This is uh, 13 quid. It's a five-port switch. What you would do is the receiving home plug, plug it network cable in that in one of the ports and that would give you four ports free to share the signal so one could go in a smart tv one in the xbox uh, and then you've got a couple spare for any other network ports okay and then uh, a wireless access point now i've seen a lot of people reusing their old virgin routers or the bt routers you can do that 
but if you're not technically skilled to to log into that and you know D, dns server on dns server off and and change all the all the settings that you that, that's probably foreign language to you um just buy one of these 19 quid dead easy to set up you just plug it in switch it on connect to it on your mobile put the username and password into it what you get with the uh the instructions and then all you do is you name the ssid which is another name for your internet name if you've got sky or broadband uh, your, your sky ssid would be sky one two three four five that's the net the, the internet name that you log on to with your device so you, you log on to this you change the name the default name to match your router and then obviously put the password as the same if you want and then wherever you put this access point with plugged into the uh, power line kit you've got 100 percent wireless signal so so we've got an access point home plugs and your switch so if you get all of them get all that lot bought not expensive and then what you might need some network cable so get some exterior grade network cable uh, kenable that's a decent website uh, pretty cheap for cables if you're not confident putting the connectors on the end buy the cables pre uh, pre-made pre-length so depending on the length of your garden five meter ten meter 50 meter this one is but you can get them pre-made with connectors already on okay so that's your shopping list that's the kind of stuff you need how's it going just a, a quick uh, update for this video i'm just thinking after i've recorded the video as a bit i forgot to add in uh, the two options i've covered for connecting internet to your shed is one is to use a home plug kit from your internet source in your front room um, to get the internet to my garage and then from the garage run a cable down the side of the house straight into the shed and then option two would be to again home plug kit in the router and the other home plug kit straight in the shed so use the electricity infrastructure to direct the internet through the electricity cable um, the reason I chose option one um, like I say a home plug kit sender here the receiver in the garage because i already had a cable an armored cable running down the side of the house to provide the shed with electricity so i just thought well i'll just cable tie uh, a network cable to that because it's already laid down so it just makes sense when you get in the shed obviously put your cable into a switch which i've showed you on the internet what the switch is that's a five port switch and in one of them ports just put a wireless access point in uh, again i've showed you on the internet what I will, sh yeah, I've showed you on the internet what the access point is. That will go in one of the ports, and then it will that will basically open up your network connection in the shed wirelessly, so people can connect and jump onto that. You can rename on the access point. You can you can name your internet the same as what you've got in your house. So if you've got um, Sky X Y Z A B C, you name your access point the same. Put the same password in. So wherever you go, it will jump onto the strongest signal. What I did with mine is I named the access point in the shed to Meg's Bar Wi-Fi. So it's a different name. So people go in there, they log on to that. Just like you go in a cafe or a restaurant, you, you jump onto those. It's using the same connection, but obviously it's named differently. So when you're in there, you jump onto Meg's Bar Wi-Fi. Just giving it that authentic, you know, thinking I'm big time with my own shed. <laughs> anyway, lockdown's not doing myself any favours with my haircut. I look like Ken Barlow. Anyway, if you've got any, like I say at the end of this video, if you've got any questions around options one or options two or any difficulties you've got, uh, send me a message on Facebook or leave a comment on YouTube because I'll put this on YouTube as well and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer. All right, thanks. Right, so I'll show you option one. So what I've done is you can see there in the wall there's a power line. Now, it's not the same as the BT ones I showed you because I bought these quite a while ago. It's a different model. Excuse all the wires and the mess. It's better out of the way. So the power line goes into your plug socket. The cable you can see coming out of that goes into my Virgin router. Okay? So that's put the signal, my internet signal or data signal, all the way around the house. Okay, so that's the sender. And then we'll walk through to the garage. So you can see 
the receivers down there. So out of that, you can see the three lights on. So that's connected up. So I've got a network cable coming out of that. And that goes all the way down the side of the garage. And it goes up to a switch on the wall there. The reason I've done it on that wall is because that's the outside. It's easy to drill a hole in that and then put an outside uh, cable to run all the way down the side. Okay, I'll go through the front. Here we go. So this is the side of the garage. That's where the cable comes out. Okay, now it runs down the side of the garage with my um, armoured cable that powers the, because obviously I've connected the electricity there as well because my meter's in the garage. So the electricity cable and the network cable all the way down at the side of the house. Okay, it goes under the slab and then down the side of the up to the uh, up to the shed. Okay, so then that comes there, goes into the shed with the weatherproof connector, and then we go inside. Okay, so here we are. So the cable, I've run it down the back of the TV, uh, back of the the seating. Yeah, and then that goes behind the bar, down here, and you can see the flashing lights, it goes into that switch, that's an old Netgear switch, the switch I showed you on the internet is the same thing, it's just a lot smaller. So the cable from outside goes in the back of there, and then out of the back of there goes into my PC, which is nearly fell off the shelf, there we go, and then the other one goes into a wireless access point behind the TV, so the TV is connected. So basically I've just branched all the connections off, just like electricity when you get a four gang plug adapter and you split the electricity. It's just the same with network, it's just a different type of uh, connector. You're just splitting the data, but you're not relying on Wi-Fi. Okay, so yeah, PC's connected up, it's hardwired, so I can have YouTube on there. That's connected to the both the connected to the PC is dual screen. While I'm in the shed, I'll show you a few other tips. Oh, another popular question is, how can I heat my shed without uh, making my electricity spin so fast that it'll cut diamonds? My missus pays the gas and electric, so obviously I don't want to get it in the neck. Gas and electric bill's gone up because you keep leaving the lights and all the and all the uh, all the fridges on in your shed. Well, I do, but anyway, Chinese diesel eater, 77 quid, I got that for, on eBay, basically just fill it up with diesel, it's remote control, it's got an exhaust pipe that you have to drill through your shed, and obviously take the waste gases away, the harmful gases, and then all you do, at the front, you get really hot air coming through them four vents, and it's quite economical. I used to have one of them little gas camping heaters where it uses a, a can of gas at about £1.20 each, but I used to go through like two of them a night. This um, this will like, constantly on eight hours, Saturday and Sunday, you know, currently with the, the weather as it is, um, it'll last probably four day, four or four days, two weekends. At one, that's a five litre, so it's a fiver. Um, for, but you know when I'm saying I used a can of gas that was only like a few hours of a night after work but I have this on all day so it's really economical and uh, I've got a carbon, monoxide, carbon monoxide sensor in the corner there just in case but you know it is just hotter it blows out the waste gases go outside and you can extend you can buy extensions for the exhaust pipe uh, to wrap it around the side of, you know take the gases away uh, smoke machine, 30 quid off eBay, that works really well, party nights. Um, uh, dartboard surround made that out of corks, just for those people who were uh, playing darts when they've had a drink. And ice machine, that's off Amazon, 120 quid. Okay. So I'll close this one and I'll go on to option two. Okay, so option two. 
So the home, the BT Home Plug Kit showed you on the uh, on the website. There you go, your two plugs, two network cables. I've took one out of the packet just to show you. So simply, what you do is plug one in the plug socket. Did a lot of them don't tend to work on extension, you know, the trailing extension sockets. You have to plug it in the wall. Some work, um, some don't. It's just trial and error. You're not going to do anything wrong by trying it. So. Plug it in the um, plug it in the plug socket near your router. Put the network cable in there, and then put the the other end of the network cable in the back of your router. Generally, you've got four or five ports on your router, so put the other one in there, and then take the receiving one to your shed. Let's go. Weather's absolutely minging. Okay, so the receiving unit So the receiving unit you would put that in the plug socket near your switch and then the network cable would come out of that and go into said switch, 8 port switch, the one I showed you on the website. So network and then that would give you your internet from your house to your shed without trailing a cable all the way down the garden. The reason I've done it down the garden is because obviously I've branched it off into access points in all different areas and the cable was already there, the uh, the armoured cable. So I just thought I'd just cable tie the cable to that because it was already in place. But I get it, everybody's situation is different. It's not possible to trace a cable down the garden. Um, so just use the power line kit, try it. If it doesn't work, I've got a consumer unit in here which has got separate fuses can see there now them power line kits some don't work through them some do again it's trial and error uh, but I would, if it doesn't work then you are going to have to run a cable from your house to your shed anyway I hope the videos have been helpful if you've got any questions send me a message either on Facebook uh, Mark Gowans or you can put a message on YouTube and I'll, uh, I'll answer it Okay guys, thanks a lot. Speak to you soon.